Here we go again. This is Barb with Lost and Floss. This is video number 64 or somewhere in that range. And today is September 21st, 2021. And I'm here to talk about my cross stitching, my very, very um, beginning foray <laughs> into quilting, which I didn't get very far. Um, but I'll show you what I'm going to be working on. And I've had lots of stitching since it's been over a month since I recorded last. Um, yeah, and, and I even tried <laughs> some fabric dyeing. So I'll show you what that looks like. And we'll just have some fun. Okay? All right. Let's go. <laughs> and you have to remember... Um, yeah, <laughs> so this was supposed to be my retirement video party. <laughs> and um, yeah, old age set in and guess who forgot the box of stuff that uh, <laughs> was supposed to be part of the video. Um, so I am going to call an audible, audio, blah, blah, audible and um, I'll do that next video, so sorry about that. But, um, you know, I have lots to show this video, but next video, I've got some great finishes coming up that are almost done at home that I can't wait to show you. Um, yeah, so hopefully you'll like this video and come back for more. Um, if you haven't already um, and you're new to this channel, please like the video and subscribe. I'm rather sporadic in when I record, so um, that way you'll be sure not to miss out on the fun. <laughs> so I'm I'm wearing my brewery shirt today. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's kind of an exciting time to be a Wisconsin sports fan. So um, coming off the Bucks winning the championship and the Brewers having a good season and. <laughs> The Packers, well, game one really was bad. First half of last night, Monday football was not good. Um, but you're not here to hear sports. So. Uh, but anyways, um, very excited for the Brewers doing really well this year. So hope they continue. So let's see. Um, yeah, I think I'll show some of, um, some of what I'm working on. So I, I forgot how much I hate stitching on black or dark, dark fabrics. I don't know how you people do it. Um, I think I even tried with a flashlight in my lap, but I think I need a brighter one. The, when I was doing it before, I used like more of a spotlight thing and that seemed to help. But I really wanted to get a start on this 19, let's see, 19. 1999 Christmas Sampler by Carriage House Samplings. I love how it looks on the dark fabric, so I don't want to not do it on the dark. And it's just maybe six, five, five DMC flosses, so um, it should be pretty easy. But I spent, I don't know how long, just getting the beginning of a I and a K, and it might be upside down, I don't know. My, using my system of putting my needle at the top, I guess it would be like this. Um, but when I even got this far, I realized I'm off. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna have to wait till I have my spotlight light and um, try to give it a better whirl. Um, I'm stitching one over two with the Colt Fork colors, and I'm digging furiously mm, to see what what um I think this is picture. Oh, here it is. It is picture this plus shadow, and I really I love the fabric color with the colors that are going to be on it. So I gotta try to make that work. Um, so I had um, my friend Lisa and I, hi Lisa, <laughs> um, took a trip 
um, to our not so local LNS to drop off um, to pick out a frame. Um, I decided I was going to go for it and have my After the Roses that I stitched with Kathy of To, to Die House um, as a stitch along uh, professionally framed. I figure, you know, it's something that I'll have out all the time and I am going <laughs> to take a, a step into trying some of them myself too but um that one I just I love so much that I wanted to have it done right um well anyways Lisa and I um zipped over to our lot not so local LNS and um the other thing I I I actually did not buy a single chart when I was there because I had bought so many lot the time before. Um, but what I did get was I want to stitch the Scarlet House jingle all the way. And I found this piece of 36 count. It's by Stephanie um, Glaston, Glastonbury, Glastonbury something or other. <laughs> I don't know. But isn't that going to be pretty? I, I thought I'm stitching with Belle Swa, vanilla pudding, and cranberry. I thought I had more cranberry, so I might have to get some more of that. But I think that's going to be really, really pretty on that fabric. And Lisa liked it so much, she's going to stitch along with me. So, um... <laughs> We'll be jingling all the way. So I really like that. Um, I just got some other, lots of flosses and I don't know. Oh, I did buy something else that I have to show because I love them so much. Um, Lisa was asking the woman at the store about scissors and then in the end she didn't buy these, so I did. So there's only one pair hanging on the thing, but they're the Kai Needle Craft Scissors. And they're, they're shaped like this. And I wasn't sure I was gonna like them, but <laughs> I lose scissors all the time. Is it a thing? Uh, how many of you have lost your embroidery scissors? I, you know, that that's why I can't see, I can't spend $100 for a pair of embroidery scissors that I'm actually going to use and lose. So I felt like $19, you know, I'm, I'm going to try not to lose them because I like them so much. And I think it helps that they're, you know, you can, you can see the shape of them. So you can get really nice and close. And it really helps. Um, I've noticed with the pin stitch, I've really, I feel like I've been doing a better job getting started because I can clip off that thread and then I just take the back of my needle and tuck it down. So it just stays very well. Um, so I bought that and um, yeah, it was, it was fun being out and about <laughs> with our masks and um, you know, doing lunch, it was, it was a nice day. So anyways, um, before I forget, um, jumping all over the place <laughs> sorry um thank you for all the retirement congratulations I mean you know it, it's been a weird year and that's why I'm going to have my party with you all later on um but I do appreciate all the messages people sent and posted and um I've got something really special to show next video that I received that I can't wait to share with you so, um, yeah, and um, I had asked if it was a thing, and I forgot to mention about sewing your hair into <laughs> your pieces, and I am not the only one that has that issue. So, i um, so glad that so many of you also, um, someone commented, <laughs> leave your DNA <laughs> behind. <laughs> yeah, they'd have no doubt, um, you know, finding most of us because like you just can't help it. Either that or, or they'll get your pet, right? Um, so before I forget to ask this, I had someone reach out to me recently and ask about what's the difference between a small pillow and like a pin pillow, pin cushion. Um, in my mind, 
like because because the reason she asked was because she fills her small pillows with crushed walnut shells and in my mind and i don't know if this is right or not because i'm just going by what i think and no scientific basis whatsoever but um in my mind a pin cushion would always be filled with either like walnut shells or sawdust while a small pillow could be filled with those two items but could also be filled with fiber fill i don't know like i just might be making that up but if you guys don't mind leave a comment and and you know we'll see what you think about it um okay so let's see um let's let's continue i guess i kind of started showing and then got off on a tangent surprise surprise so i'm trying to get this scarlet house american farmhouse finished up i've been doing some barn raising and now that i look at this i need to i need to keep on this one because once i get the barn done then i'll be on the home stretch so i kind of started weird but i put the roof on the barn before i put the walls up which i don't know i don't think any structural engineer would say that's a good way to build the barn but that's what worked for me because i think i was counting off the quilt so made it easier I'm still trying to decide on the blue for the flowers. So I guess I'll probably leave those for the end and figure that out. But I love this one and I say that every time I show it. Um, just I keep plugging away at it and it really is a pleasure to stitch. And after trying to stitch on that shadow color, this color is a breeze for me. So, um, Maybe that should be my new, as dark as I can go. <laughs> then we have Plum Street Samplers Home for Christmas. I almost gave up on this like a while back because when I first did the bottom border, it seemed to take forever. And now when I'm doing the top one, I'm really not so bad. So who knows? I'm getting pretty close though. Um, I still don't know if I'm gonna put the words on. I thought someone, and I'm gonna have to start digging around on Instagram, but I thought someone left the words off and I don't know if they, if they put some snowflakes there or just maybe brought in the pomegranates a little closer or just left it but the only thing I subbed out was the white color um, I, and I'm stitching this two over one on 32 count winter brew um I forgot what I'm using for white I think I'm just using anchor if you really want to know um just message me and I'll dig it out for sure. Because I never can seem to remember those things. I, you know, I have a, I use a stitching journal, but um, I almost think I'm gonna go to a system where I keep, keep a piece of paper in, um, like the project bag or envelope or whatever, I keep the project in um, myself because, myself? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, <laughs> that I keep each project in. How does that sound? A little bit better. Um, because it always seems like work to dig up that <laughs> notebook and then you know, you have some things like this is my third year of using the notebook. So I have some things that I started two years ago and were written in the one from two years ago. And I guess I should just finish things up in the year I start them, but that's probably not going to happen. Because we have projects like this one that I keep 
trying to persevere, but I, I really don't want to work on it a lot of times. But I do want to get it done, and I will get it done. Wisconsin River Sampler, Chessie and Me. I got a big glare going here. It's really cute. I'm fairly far along on it, so you would think I just want to get it done. But let me tell you, one over one. <laughs> I, I don't know why you why people like it. I don't. So my deer aren't perfect, but they're done. So we're getting there. Then I think, well, what's left? Like there's alphabets and stuff like that. So sooner or later, <laughs> might be as old as pumpkin patch by the time uh, I get it done. But I will keep working on it because I don't know, there's something about getting things done that is, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. And I don't know, I'm, I, I'm not really, like a, that hung up on that kind of stuff but I do like to get things done it makes me feel good so I'm working on the work basket work basket of seasons and um, Leanna and I saw these done up on a cute little like paper mache ring thing that flips so you could keep all four seasons out at the same time. And so I am working on winter and I've got yeah, pretty much done on it. And I'm stitching one over two on 32 count Bramble by Picture This Pro Plus. I guess if I had to pick the red out, I probably wouldn't wouldn't pick that, but I'm just going with all the call for colors. That house kind of reminds me of McDonald's colors, like the golden arches. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me and it'll look better when it's done, but I don't know. And yet not enough that I'm gonna tear it out and do it over. So, you know, <laughs> McDonald's it is. <laughs> Uh, then um, I had gotten this chart from Lisa Kindred Stitcher. It's Bent Creek, or the Trilogy Thanksgiving lineup. And I had done, oh, I'm really getting a glare here. I had done um, the Easter one as a really cute flat fold. And this is just such mindless stitching. I'm stitching it, I think I'm 28. Count Lugana, it might be mushroom, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm really almost done, except my color of whatever the top of the pumpkin pie is, was really brown compared to the shade that I wanted. So I might, I mean, it wouldn't take me that long to rip those stitches out and do it over, but a little pilgrim eye is pretty cute. So I mostly, I have the border to finish up and then there's some leaves that go on the bottom, but probably if I did eh, maybe a night of stitching, I'd have this one zipped, zipped and zipped up. That doesn't sound right either. I'm, I don't know, my phrases, you know, I don't talk to people now that I'm retired other than my husband, so. But I mean, I, what I want to say about that is I have a lot of over, over dyed flosses tied up in this one. And so that's why I've been kind of, you know, pulling it out on the nights where I'm tired and really maybe wouldn't stitch, but you know, it's kind of mindless stitching. So it goes really well. Um, let's stop the floss for a minute and I'll show you my first attempt at dyeing some fabric. You know, I had bought like pieces of Monaco, you know, when I first got back into stitching thinking that was the bee's knees and now I don't really even 
stitch on that very much unless it's just the perfect color. So I thought, well, that'd be a good, good things to try. Um, like goofing with the, the dyeing of the linen or fabric, I should say, because it's not linen, except for one piece. I did dye one piece of linen, but I think it was from Joann's, like that cheaper stuff. And I thought, eh, if I screw it up, I screw it up. But, um, hmm. Let's see here. Uh, let's put it up against here, otherwise I don't know if the color will show good. I've got, well, this was a piece that I had started something on a while back, but I do, I mean, I like the modeling that I achieved. I think this was um, like a camel color or something. And then this one, was, I believe, navy. But, you know, I'll, I'll use this for something. I like I like the coloration on it. Um, oh, that, oh no, you know what this was? <laughs> I gotta show it again. <laughs> it wasn't camel. This is raspberry, chocolate raspberry wine. <laughs> And, um, I don't know, somebody had brought it to our house and I had it in my fridge for quite a while and there was one, I don't know, something I stitched where they told you to put it in red wine and it was only red wine I had. So it smelled really good when I was doing it. Um, the only thing is I dripped some water on the other piece I dyed the same way and then that kind of um, took the wine out of it. So I, I would, if I use this, I'd have to be very, very careful not to get it wet at all. Because um, then I tried washing the whole thing to get that spot out and now it kind of just looks, doesn't look white, but it doesn't look the least bit pink or rosy or anything. Um, this is the piece of camel. And this one I do like. It's just, it's kind of fun to see, like when I was doing them, I was just kind of doing the hurry up method <laughs> and doing it in my sink and, you know, I'm like, whatever happens, happens. Um, but, and then this one was like the, was, um, the aqua color and I thought I had it very, um, very light in saturation but it got to be way too bright so then I put it in the camel color I thought well maybe if I antique it a little bit but then it just got too brown and so I just kept rinsing it and you know now now I think I'd use it and then my final piece <laughs> This was funny. So I had like dove gray and charcoal gray. And I thought, well, if I do the base dove gray and then I lightly put the charcoal gray in, it'll be just perfect. Well, I didn't realize by doing that, the dove gray got almost purple. <laughs> All I could think of was Halloween. So I kept doing more and more and more. And maybe now, I think this is 32 count. Maybe, maybe I'll end up using this for the Christmas thing now that I see this. And uh, if it doesn't get any bad, better. Um, but I do like this. I had, I got kind of a blop in the middle. So, but I think, you know, for a first try, not so bad. Definitely has different, you know, movement of colors in it so um but yeah and then with some of the leftover dye i had bought some of that um chenille yarn that's like white as white can be so i dipped it in the leftover colors it wasn't really taking the color very well at all so what i did was i didn't really um i didn't really wring it out. I just left it all kind of wadded up for a day and every day I would kind of like rearrange it. So I think eventually the dye just 
dried on there, but I wouldn't have high hopes if I um, got that wet. But this was the um, the the aqua the aqua um, color with a little bit of the camel color over it, and then this was just the camel color. I think I've got like too much light. <laughs> lighting today. It was looking like the sun was going to set for a while and so I like found every light under the sun and now it kind of looks like um it's not. <laughs> so who knows. Um, but I'm, I'm taking taking the um, opportunity while my hubby is out in the wilderness um, to do a little filming so I don't get in his way and he doesn't get in mine. <laughs> so Bouquet 1813 kit by Samplers Not Forgotten. This one I could just keep stitching on because I love it so much and I've got a nice little start. Don't ask me about that row that has nothing in it. I, I was trying to, um, had a counting error, so I'm trying to make up for it because like, I'm not gonna rip that all out. Okay, and this one, um, a lot of you saw on Instagram on Leanne's birthday, August 24th. Um, I decided I had started a piece last year as a tribute and so I decided every August 24th I'm going to start a new piece. Well originally I had hoped to get the one from 2020 done <laughs> before I started this one but um, I thought instead of I, I started All Joys for Thine by Blackbird Design um, on the 24th of August and um, Sorry for the glare. Go this way. This is just so pretty. And I'm doing everything called for. Can you believe it? I'm not changing a thing. But I'm try trying to see. I think this is the way it goes. Yeah, it is. So I've got to start. Not much of a one. Because I was going to keep working on this. And then, then I thought, no, it's foolish to get further on this without being done with the 2021. So I've been trying to concentrate a little bit more on Winter Rose Manor. Okay. Um, oh, so stop the floss. Let's see. Stop. No, I don't know. What's a hand? Oh, stop, right? Stop the floss. Um, so I had mentioned before, I'm going to teach myself how to quilt. So I've been watching videos and thank you all for suggesting um, lots of different quilters. I feel like I'm learning a lot already. Um, and uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone had emailed me and said, check out Celeste Create. She's doing a tutorial with like a project and I watched it and I thought this is perfect for me because it's it's small enough and it, it makes sense in my limited knowledge. And um, so what I did was I went and bought some fabrics and I wanted it, I, I thought, well, I don't know that I'm gonna get this done before Christmas. So I wanted something, it's just like a, um, it's a scrappy quilt, but it's, and it's a small, like, I don't even know what the size is, 48. 48 blocks, but they're all the same. It, well, not all the same, different fabrics, but um, so it's like two rectangles with a rectangle across the top. And so I wanted colors that would be nice around the holiday, but wouldn't scream Christmas. And so this is what I ended up with. Um, this one, I'm still not sure of. I, I needed a big red and the quilt shop lady talked me into that. I'm just not sure that's how it's gonna look. But I thought, you know, I'll cut some stuff out and we'll see how it goes. Um, I did have a lot of people stop me as I was taking my selection up to the counter and um, 
you know, asked me what I was making and compliment, complimented me on my color selection. But I kind of, I, this was the fabric I found first that I based like my other selections on. And this one I really, really like with it. Oopsie. So we'll go like this. And then can't go wrong with the red paisley. And there was this leafy green. And well, this is the one I don't know about, but it might be okay. The color is good. And then this is another green, just a little all over nothing. And yeah, I guess I have a lot of greens. A little deeper color with just a little, I don't even know if that's a tree or just a shape. Oh, well, I guess it, I don't know, maybe a tree, a bird an airplane I don't know what is that so and then this one is another big one but I think can you see it <laughs> I think I think it'll be pretty so I'm gonna try in the next couple days to cut out my squares and or rectangles and start sewing <laughs> so I'll let you know how that goes all right so let's get back to whips as I, as I said, I have a lot of whips because it's been over a month and you know I project jump. <sighs> How many Scarlet House am I working on? I really should count up. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, this is what? Be Mary and Bright. I don't know what I'm stitching this on. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. But, um... I guess it goes like this. I miss far, and I love the colors in this. It, you know, it's not so many colors, and and I know I'm using the call for colors, I believe, except maybe the gold is a different gold. Um, and I'm stitching this. Up. I know it's a 36 count, and I'm doing one over two. So I love this, and. I will keep working on it because I want to get this done for Christmas this year. Um, I mentioned I was going to get this out again. And I did. Yes, Virginia. So you have to excuse. This is, this is how I had to find the center of my chart by marking it on here. Because the, the size didn't quite work. And then I did my white before I did my words, which was a mistake. So I had to pull out some of my white. And I was, I had pulled that out. So I was better at getting back on track than I thought I was going to be. But then I realized I ran out of the, the whatever color. I, I got this as a conversion from um, Country Sampler in Spring Green, Wisconsin. Um, so whatever their white was, I realized I had <laughs> run out. So I had to purchase some of that on my shopping trip. So, um, you know, I think this will be done for Christmas. And yeah, I think I can't wait to probably pop it in like a charcoal -y frame. Just something simple and rustic I think will be good for him. And yeah, so yes, Virginia, closing in on another finish. Um, as I mentioned, I, I've been doing, you know, some framing. Yeah, I guess the, I have like a couple pieces that I'm really close to having as FOs. So... Um, it, it will feel good to get them done. All right. <laughs> the wordplay sale. Who's with me? <laughs> oh, man. These are killing me. So I decided even if I don't get them turned into the little quilt to hang on the little bench this year, I'm just going to keep stitching on them. And it's it's really turned into an ordeal and I don't know why that should be but it just is I'm looking for something here this will work um 
I'm changing, of course, changing a lot of the colors. And I'm hoping it doesn't look too patriotic. I might have to bring something else in there. But I'm like, a, a schoolhouse has to be a little red schoolhouse. Especially when there's a color called schoolhouse red. I mean, it just made sense to me. So, um, hopefully another night or two and I'll get that one crossed off my list. And then I'll be 75% done and only have October, November, and December. And I will be yelling hooray or woohoo or something of that nature. Because, you know, this reminds me of, like, I find all kinds of things to do instead of stitching on this one. And it takes me back to, like, when I was a kid and I had homework to do. And I would clean my room, which I didn't enjoy cleaning my room. So it was, you know, a way of doing something productive instead of the thing that you should have been doing. So that's kind of how I'm starting to feel about wordplay. And I love them. I'm glad when I have another one stitched, but I don't know that I would set that goal of doing one a month anymore. <laughs> so here we have Scarlet House, once again, surprise, um, Fall Frolic. And I don't know if anyone else is stitching this, but when I look at at the key, like the moon is baby chick, but it really looks white to me. I don't know. So then I tried using white on mine and it didn't show up. Oh wait, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> I almost showed you my tall one. Oh geez. So instead of the white, I hauled out Harvest Moon in most places and I'm subbing in for that. And then, um, so around the numbers, instead of putting 1809, I thought it'd be kind of fun to put 1031 for the date of Halloween. So that's what I did. And then I was stitching this during the Packer game last night. So you people from Wisconsin, I hope you don't think that looks too packery around the, the boxes, around the, the numbers, but I'm like, I think it'll be fine. And, and most people don't look at green and gold like we look at green and gold. So I've got the little squirrel on the key done, and let's see, what else is left of the little motifs? Um, there's a little house, and then some one-over-one one gravestones. I don't know. I was, I was, um, let's see, where is it? Oh, I thought it was, oh, yeah, you barely can see it over here, right there. I was, um, trying to see if I could make the white work. I was using two strands or one strand and two looks really bulky and one doesn't show up. So I don't know, maybe I'll use the, uh, whatever color the owl is for the gravestone. Cause I don't think most gravestones are bright white anyways. I think that's what they are. So anyways, yeah, we're, we're making progress on that one. Um, and then from the Winds of Autumn book by Blackbird Design, I thought it was appropriate to do, let me find it. <laughs> I think it's called September Sampler. We need sunflowers. Oh, sorry. Um, bittersweet September. <laughs> sorry. It's really a pretty one. These always just seem to take longer though than what I'm anticipating they're gonna take because they're small, but it seems like there's lots of stitching in. But it's coming along. And I'm stitching this on 36 count. I know it's a lakeside, I think it's buttercream. So little scrap that I had. And I really like it. I think it's very, very pretty. Okay. And then, and then, my final whip is, this is my horrendous working copy, Winter Rose Manor. Oops. This way. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
Um, yeah, I'm getting there, but I need to just keep on it. This is my other Leanne's legacy piece. Started last year on her birthday. So I think, you know, like there's a bunch of trees that go next to the bird. And if they're all one color, I think they'll go fairly fast and then finish up the border. And, you know, I've got more flowers to add on top and also in the vase on the bottom. But I love it. It'll be really pretty. I can't wait to pick out a beautiful frame. And, oh, and I guess I have to fill in the windows, too. <laughs> Unless I'll just leave them blank. I don't know. All righty. So that takes care of that. Um, let's see. Uh, we did that. We did that. Um, okay. Um, so now we go on to finished objects. Um, this was a Blackbird design Leanne started. Um, she was using Belle Soie Noir and stitching one over two on 32 count Tycho. Oh, 30, it must be 36 count, right? Yeah, 36 count Tycho. But it's done. It's pretty and I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, and then I had showed this before, but I found the buttons that I'm going to use on Broderie à Paris by Sue Hillis. And I found this um, in my stash in an ornate black frame that fits this pretty well. And so I... Um, I'm using some of the darker buttons because it'll balance out the frame color once I get this done. So hopefully next video you can see it in there. And I love this one. I just, I think it's so beautiful. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Fun to have it totally done. Um, last year as a gift, I stitched October... Um, from a prairie year by prairie schooler i love these little ones so so far for myself i have october and i have i did march oh i have four of them march i have the rabbit and i have the basket of the may basket getting these series done but i stitch it pretty much um i know the fabric's different but pretty much the same as the one that i gifted and used over dyed threads instead of the called for colors made some cording and then on the back i just um did a little wool pumpkin stitched on to cover where i slit it to stuff it so thank you lisa <laughs> making great use of your wool um and then <laughs> the other lisa <laughs> from our local stitching group um sent me peace rose by blackbird design just such a pretty little little stitch And works for me because my initial is B, so I could just use the charted one. Um, I think I said last time what I stitched this on. It's 36 count. I'm not really sure. But I really, I love how it turned out. Then I just put this little vintage seam binding. I think it's seam binding. So I covered the... Um, back with that um, and then I just put uh, I'm really getting a glare um, I put some pearls interspersed but 
I love it and it will be just a pretty thing to have out year round. I filled it with sawdust, mostly. I think the corners have fiber fill in them, but um, yeah, sawdust. All right, well, and that's it. Um, I will have definitely more FOs to show you next video. Um, yeah, <laughs> the retirement party. So, what else has been going on? Um, had a Zoom call with a couple stitchy friends recently, so that was fun. Um, we decided we're going to do um, a small exchange around Christmas time, so that'll be fun to do. Um, what? Oh, it's, it seems like it's been so long and um you know life goes fast we had um right before school started my daughter and her family came up so the four kids and they hadn't been up in a couple years to the cabin so that was so fun and just you know there's such fun fun ages and they we have like the upstairs is just one open area and the steps there's a there's a door at the bottom of the steps at the bottom um and you kind of almost have to reach down to get the handle i mean it's it's kind of hard in the middle of the night if someone gets up and so um they knew the two older ones would be fine but they weren't sure about the four-year-old handling that so being the bobby i am <laughs> I said, oh, you know, I'll I'll sleep up there with them. Well, they were so excited, you know, it's just like this this major sleepover and oh my the mornings were just so fun with them. So, you know, eight six four and like the first night was a little rough. I had two of them get up in the middle of the night and you know, it was just like uh stumbling around. But um so in the morning I would just kind of lay there and I could hear them, you know, with their books and whatever. And then, you know, the first one would crawl and get in bed with me, which was a double bed. And then the second one would crawl in, and then the third one would crawl in. And I was telling them about when I was a kid, my sister was two years older and we had a cousin who was just right in between us in age. And when she would come to sleep over, because we had a double bed, when we were little, we would sleep, you know, three of us going the the, the length of the bed <laughs> instead of the width of the bed. Um, and it gave you more room when you were short enough that your feet wouldn't hang off. So we're, we're all like three of us, four of us in there and, the, um, <laughs> The six-year-old fell out of bed on the, on the other side from where and I was, and we were laughing. And, um, <laughs> and then my granddaughter says, well, I can tell you one thing. It's going to be a lot more crowded if we add a husband in here. <laughs> and I was just laughing. I'm like, well, Jocelyn, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be, you know, inviting your husband <laughs> to join us, you know, um, when you're growing up in, in uh, morning snuggle time. So <laughs> she just comes up with the funniest things. So we had, it was there, uh, my daughter and son-in-law's uh, 10th wedding anniversary, which really happened fast. So we had a little, you know, <laughs> made, made signs on post-it notes and hung some balloons and I found some um, sparkling grape juice for the kids and got some fluted champagne the plastic ones from the dollar store so they they enjoyed having a little little celebration um i don't know just spending you know time outdoors still um it's it's been pretty nice uh definitely edging in on fall um we went um to one of my former co-workers. She had retired before I did and her husband's big into fishing. And so um, they invited us for a fish fry, which was, you know, by far any better than any restaurant. So that was a lot of fun and great fun to catch up with them. Um, 
Oh, we got our tree cleaned up, I should say. Well, my husband got it all cut up the day I was shopping at the Stitchy sh store. And then on um, the next day, he wanted me, he wanted help loading it into the back of the pickup, or not the pickup truck, but the trailer. And he was going to put it down by the road and just put a sign on it, free wood, because it was really good maple and, um, you know, would have been really good firewood. Um, so, but like some of the chunks were this big around and this thick. So to get it on the trailer, I mean, we used a dolly to flip it on and then, you know, drove it up, but then getting it off, <laughs> I'm like, why don't we just park the trailer at the end of the driveway on the cul-de-sac and he's like no I, I really want to pile it you know right right on the you know the edge of the lawn and I'm like well, okay so that meant we had a you know after we had just loaded it on the trailer we had to unload it on the cul-de-sac and he was going to put something on the neighbor's Facebook um, site and you know we were like well whoever takes it they'll have to load it you know so we're done now um, and he was smart. He, when he was going to put his little note out there, he's like, you know, because sometimes what happens is you see the little stuff go and then the big chunks sit there. So he stacked it so the smaller branches were underneath the big stuff. So, you know, you, you had to move the big stuff to get the little stuff. And, um, and so he put a picture of, of it out there. And then we went in and I was looking at the picture and I'm like, you know, I, I tapped on it and it's like, gets big and there I am all, all sweated up like in the background. I'm like, yeah, that has to come off. So cropped the picture of, you know, just the firewood and um, he put it back on. And, and as we're like looking at it again, we hear someone at the front door, hello. And I'm like, oh, okay. So go and look, and it's um, some a man who was out biking, and he's like, is the wood free? There's not a sign on it. And I said, well, we haven't gotten that far yet, but yes. And well, it turned out he lived just down the cul-de-sac, and um, he would take it all, but he had had surgery, so he couldn't lift. <laughs> so that meant what? My, my husband's like, oh, we can, you know, I can help you with that. And so that meant Barbara and I can help you with that. So <laughs> instead of like having everything on the trailer and just driving it like, I don't know, quarter mile down the street, we had to load the wood into his little garden <laughs> trailer. And honestly, I thought... The way my back felt, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to walk tomorrow. But woke up the next morning and didn't feel a thing. So I I always kid my husband. I'm like, it's a good thing you didn't marry a skinny girl. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was fun. And I don't know, we've just been, um, you know, trying to see the grandkids here and there. And... Um, we, we need to move my mom to another facility. It's the same, same facility, but just different level of care. So, but um, her current place has positive COVID cases. So we have to wait to move her to the place across the street until everyone's clear. So who knows when that'll be, but um, it'll give us another opportunity to reorganize and you know it's how it is so um yeah and then <laughs> this was funny <laughs> one day um the grandkids like to facetime and so um my granddaughter will say something and then she'll want me to draw it so like for instance she said horse and I don't know if that was koala and apple and I don't know what that other guy was. A bear. Oh, a panda bear, I think. Um, so that, and here's a robot. Robot. Then she said, a bucket of goo. I'm like, hmm, okay, a bucket of goo. So I draw 
a bucket of goo. Oops. Here, this really. Oh, come on. Here, bucket of goo. And she starts laughing hysterically. And she's like, Bobby, why did you draw a bucket of goo? And I said, you said draw a bucket of goo. I just drew what you told me to. She's like, Bobby. <laughs> she has this real matter-of-fact voice. I didn't say a bucket of goo. I said, a pic draw a picture of you. <laughs> like, oh my God, my bad hearing. So... Here's my picture, picture of Bobby doing her cross stitch. <laughs> oh, we were, we were still laughing about it the next day, like a bucket of goo. I was wondering why she wanted a bucket of goo, but um, yeah, <laughs> joys of getting old. So um, yeah, I hope um, it's already, yeah, it's already almost the end of September. Um, so I don't know if I'll get another video recorded, but, um, October, I've always done F, F, O, and then the O stretches into October, and I can't even remember my own rules. I'll have to put them, I'll have to put them in the show notes. Um, that's what I'll do, but, um, I know I used it for a good opportunity to get some of my final finishing done in the past and um it's it's been great i i think i can't remember what my rules are <laughs> like I, I i think i can still start new things i'll have to check that out though before october 1st because um there are some like if i have a couple christmas ornaments i want to start and various things like that so um I'll check it out and I'll, I'll let you know. I'll also probably put a post on Instagram under Lost and Floss 2. And yeah, I think um, that about wraps it up. So, you know, my heart goes out to so many people that um, are being tested to the nth degree right now in their lives. And, you know, just better, better days ahead and seeing the positive wherever we can. So please continue to fill the world with love and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Hi Floss 2, it's Barb with Lost in Floss. This is a channel primarily, <laughs> let's try again. Hello Floss 2. It's good. This is going to be a hot mess. Um, I, I've been trying to get set up for like an hour now. And, you know, when you're out of your normal element, well, I don't have a normal element. So I guess it, that's just how it rolls. Let's, let's just start over. Hello, Flot. <laughs> Hello. Okay. All right. Deep breath. Here I go. Hello, Floss 2. It still sounds stupid. Okay. I'm going to put this as an outtake. <laughs>